Hey there, and welcome to a special 4th of July edition of the InDesign Junkie, and happy Independence Day to all of you. Though I really hope that you're actually out enjoying your day with family and friends instead of spending it watching InDesign tutorials. Though I should say that if you are, I guess I'm sincerely flattered. Now as for me, I've actually been outside grilling some burgers for about 10 people that my wife and I are having over to our apartment. But the whole time I was grilling, I kept thinking about process colors, so I've decided to let the burgers cook for a while, and I've quickly ducked into my office to do this tutorial. And it's a fitting tutorial for July 4th, because today I'm going to talk about everyone's four favorite colors, namely CMYK, which of course stands for Cyan, Magenta, Yellow, and Black, the four colors of ink that can be mixed together to reproduce millions of colors across the color spectrum. And specifically what I'm going to talk about is how to make sure that when you're prepping your InDesign files for printing, that all of your colors are in CMYK mode, and any spot colors are removed. Now I'm going to save a discussion on the difference between CMYK colors and spot colors for another time, because after all this is a holiday, and that's a really in-depth topic. But needless to say, if the job you want printed is a full color job, it's likely going to be printed in CMYK. And any additional spot colors in your document could cause problems on press. Now most likely if you send a file to the printer and it has spot colors in it, the printer will go ahead and remove those colors for you, but they could charge you for that. So it's better to take care of this up front, and luckily InDesign makes it pretty easy for us to do that. So we're looking at a two-page spread here, and let's just say that for the purposes of this tutorial, we're prepping this two-page spread for the printer, and we want to check for any unwanted spot colors. Now I can first check my swatches palette, so I'm going to open my swatches, and I'm going to just scan through my colors here, and it's looking like these are all process colors, but down at the very bottom we have two colors that say Pantone in them. And usually that's a sure sign that these are spot colors. And I can look at this little symbol on the right, the circle and a square, and that's the symbol for a spot color. So we have two spot colors that we need to get rid of. Now the yellow color, let's start with that one first. This looks like a match to the yellow color that we see here, and then across the top and I can click on this box here and sure enough my yellow color is highlighted. So somewhere along the line either this got converted to a spot color or maybe when I initially created the color when I was designing this I accidentally created a spot color instead of the process color that I should have. So I want to just simply go ahead and change this to a process color. So I'm going to right click on my color swatch and I'm going to go to swatch options. Now, sure enough, in color mode, we see Pantone solid coated. So this is, of course, a spot color. And what I want to do is go up here to CMYK and change that. And now we see our CMYK uh, value sliders. And before we click OK, I also need to check my color type. And it still says spot. And I need to change this to process. Now finally, we now have a process CMYK color, but our swatch name still says Pantone 1205, which is kind of weird. Of course, that can be deceptive if someone else is looking at this file. So what I'm going to do is click this checkbox here, name with color value, and that makes my swatch name reflect the CMYK values of my color. And that's what I like to do with all my process colors. So I'm going to click OK. Now I don't know if you noticed, but there was a slight color shift once this went to process. It seems that our yellow color got just a tiny bit lighter. And that's because when we convert a spot color to a process color, it's usually not going to be an exact match. So if you initially chose your color by, say, referring to a PMS color swatch book, do realize that when you convert your color to CMYK, chances are it's no longer going to exactly match that color swatch that you initially chose. So if you're printing a very color-sensitive job in CMYK, it would be wise to ask your printer to provide a proof or even to tell your printer that you want to do a press check where you can actually go on press while the job is being printed so that you can be sure that you get the color you intended. Okay, but our color has been changed to process and now let's take a look at this blue color. Now this is kind of a mystery because if I select my say blue head up here the process color is highlighted. I can also check, uh, select my blue text here and it's the same thing. So I'm not quite sure where this PMS color is occurring. So now what I could do is I could just click on my color, it's now highlighted, and I could just delete it. But what InDesign asks me to do is it asks me to replace that color with something else. 
but since I don't even know where this color is, I'm a little wary about replacing it with another color. I could introduce some un undesired change to my document that might even be too subtle for me to notice just by, just by looking at it right now. So I'm going to cancel that, and instead I want to find where this color is occurring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Separations palette by going up to Window, Output, Separations Preview. And here we're going to be able to see all the separated colors in our document. I'm going to turn my separations on, and I'm going to click here on the PMS color, the Mystery Blue Pantone 7470. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to move my palettes around. It looks like it's not showing up on the left page, but on the right page, interestingly enough, it's showing up in a table title. Now that table title should have been the other process blue. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn my CMYK separations back on, and now I know where that mystery blue color lies. I can quit out of that, and what I'm going to do now is right, sl right select on my blue swatch, I'm going to go delete swatch, and what I want to do is I want to match that PMS blue to the intended CMYK blue value, which is this one here. Select that, click OK, and now look, our PMS color went entirely away. We now have nothing but, but process colors in our swatch palette. Okay, one last thing. I'm going to undo a few times, and I'm going to go back to our two PMS colors, and I'm going to go to our ink manager. There's lots of different ways to get to the ink manager, but I'm going to go to my swatch drop-down menu select ink manager and here this lists all the colors in our document and see once again we have our Pantone colors listed here now I could easily and quickly convert these PMS colors to CMYK by simply clicking on this left icon and right away now that process color CMYK icon shows up and those are now basically instantaneously process colors another thing I could do is click all spots to process and now that will convert in one click every single spot color in my document to a process color. Now this would have been fine for the yellow color but if we had allow allowed InDesign to convert that blue PMS color that was in that table title to its closest matching, proce matching process color the resulting blue would not have matched the blue that appeared elsewhere in the layout, the correct blue that should have been applied to that table title. So you would have ended up with a blue color that's not matching the blue that appears everywhere else, which could end up to be a striking error that would be easily noticeable. So you should always check your separations to find out what's going on with each of the colors in the document before you make this global decision to convert all spots to process through your ink manager. And that is how to convert your spot colors to CMYK. I better get back to my burgers now, so happy 4th, everybody, and I'll see you next time.